A man was driving his car to a location that even he had never considered visiting, after hours of driving and not finding any other form of life, the man began to break through a barricade and a sign requesting that he stop. Ignoring the warning and going further, the man is immediately shocked to find the end of his world filled with rough metric lines, indicating that he has actually been living inside a computer simulation all along. Hello everyone, who is everywhere in the entire universe. Back to the MV movie, and welcome to the plot of the sci-fi film called The Thirteenth Floor. The year is 1937 in Los Angeles. An old man named Hannon Fuller is seen writing a letter, which he plans to show to a man named Douglas. He then entrusted the letter to a trusted bartender named Aston, who was to keep the letter until someone named Dallas came to collect it. However, right after Fuller left, Aston secretly opened the letter and became quite shocked after reading its contents. Meanwhile, Fuller returned home and began to lie beside his wife, but she closed her eyes. Something happened that caused Fuller to awaken in a computer lab in downtown Los Angeles in 1997. This revealed that the world in 1937 he had just visited was just a virtual reality simulation that was able to provide a perfect experience of the situation. Years ago to everyone who visited it, and even though it is a simulation world, all the characters in there are completely unaware that they are actually just a computer program. People from the real world can enter the simulation world by transferring their consciousness into a desired character, and within a certain time they can control the character and do whatever they like. In the next scene, Fuller, who has just woken up from cyberspace, carefully leaves his apartment to go to a bar, where he uses the bar's payphone to try to contact Douglas. But at the same time, a mysterious man came from behind the door, which made Fuller rush to follow the man, but when he was outside the bar, the mysterious man suddenly stabbed Fuller with a knife and killed him on the spot. The next morning, Douglas, who woke up from his sleep, was immediately shocked after finding that one of his clothes was covered in blood, which of course made Douglas very confused because he could not remember what he had done the previous night. At the same time, Douglas received a call from a detective named McBain who asked him to come to the police immediately because this morning Fuller, who turned out to be his boss at work, was found dead because he had been brutally murdered. Detective McBain, who was suspicious of Dallas, then took him to Fuller's house to find clues. Here it is revealed that Douglas has a fairly close relative with Fuller, and currently they are working on a project that can be considered quite secret regarding a virtual world simulation with a time setting of 1937. At Fuller's own house, they are suddenly surprised by the appearance of a young woman named Jane, who claims to be the only biological child of Fuller and who has just come from Paris. A few days before, Douglas had made an appointment with Fuller to meet in this house, but when Jane arrived, it turned out that Fuller had died because he had been killed by a mysterious person. For that reason, Detective McBain immediately interrogated Jane to find out more information, while Douglas himself went to the 13th floor, which turned out to be a computer lab room where they were working on a simulated world project with a time setting in 1937. Douglas ran into a co-worker named Jason Whitney, who appeared to be devastated by the news of their boss's death. Jason also revealed that previously, Fuller had secretly tested a virtual simulation of 1937 that they were currently working on. This certainly made Douglas quite surprised, because they should only be able to test the simulation in the next few months. After that, Douglas, who returned home and opened the audio message on his phone, was again surprised by a message from Fuller, who claimed to have found something about an extraordinary truth, and he had deliberately left a letter for Douglas in the virtual simulation world in 1937 because Fuller was afraid if his own death was close enough. On the message, Douglas rushes back to the computer lab and immediately tells Jason about the message left by Fuller. He also had time to analyze all the characters met by Fuller in the virtual world before expressing his desire to enter the world in search of the message left by Fuller. Fuller, 
Jason was against this desire because it could be very dangerous for Douglas himself, but after Douglas told him that all the evidence for Fuller's murder was now directed at him and even he himself could not remember what he had done, this made Jason finally decide to help, but only with a time period of two hours. Soon after, Jason transfers Douglas's consciousness to a character named John Ferguson, who works as a bank clerk in the virtual world of 1937. Sense. Initially, Douglas, who now controls Ferguson's character, looked quite confused and tried to process everything that happened. He was also quite surprised by the extremely accurate representation of the city, which made him smile for a while. After taking his break, Douglas went to see Grayson, a historian whose character Fuller had used to visit this world. During their conversation, Douglas was surprised by Grayerson's confession that he had no recollection of ever writing him letters, revealing that once someone leaves this simulation world, the character will immediately forget the events that occurred and will find it difficult to remember everything to do while under control. After failing with Grayerson, Douglas met another character who introduced him to Jerry Aston, a bartender at the Willard Grand Hotel. The surprising thing here is that Douglas realizes that Aston bears a resemblance to Jason's face. Douglas then asked Aston whether Fuller had ever left a message for him, but Aston pretended not to know and denied ever having received any messages. This seemed to be because Aston had read the letter left by Fuller regarding the truth of this world at the same time as Douglas, who suddenly felt an oddity in his body and immediately went to the toilet and had a seizure before Ferguson's body fell unconscious and Douglas returned to the real world in the computer lab in 1997. <coughs> Douglas Hall! Hey man! You alright? It turns out that this was caused by Jason deliberately pulling back Douglas's consciousness because Douglas and Ferguson's memory link transfers began to overlap, and if Jason didn't act quickly, there was a possibility that Douglas's consciousness would forever be stuck in Ferguson's character. Even so, Douglas, with a big smile, immediately shared his experiences with Jason and claimed that the virtual world they created could function very well. Meanwhile, in the 1937 simulation world, Aston begins to realize more and more that something is wrong with his world. After now, the figure who previously claimed to be Douglas has openly stated that his name is John Ferguson, who simply cannot remember how he got to this place. Back in the real world, in 1997, a waiter from the bar where Fuller was killed named Tom Jones came to the computer lab office and asked to speak privately with Douglas. During the conversation, Tom mentioned that the person who had killed Fuller was none other than Douglas himself, because he witnessed the crime firsthand. Tom demanded a large ransom from Douglas to keep him quiet and not tell the police about this, which of course confused Douglas because he had witnessed the crime firsthand. There is much money. As if forgetting the incident, Douglas then invited Jane to dinner to tell him about the message left by Fuller to him, and from this it was clear that the two of them had started to like each other, so Jane suggested that Douglas better stay away from all these problems before he ended up like his father. Douglas then thanked her for the attention before the two started dancing and entered into a deeper relationship. After that romantic dinner, Douglas, who was sleeping at his house, was surprised by several security officers who arrested him and took him to the police station on charges of having committed the murder of Tom Jones. The detective reveals that earlier, Tom Jones came to the police station to give a statement that he saw Fuller leaving with Douglas the night he was murdered. Fortunately, the next morning Jane arrived at the police station and acquitted Douglas of the murder charge because Jane had bail as well as strong evidence showing that Douglas was with her the night Tom was killed, and even though Jane was convinced that Douglas was innocent, Douglas himself felt that just because he couldn't remember anything didn't mean he was the culprit, so Douglas rushed back to the computer lab to once again transfer his consciousness into John Ferg. In search of answers, he returned to see Gray Urson, who refused him because it was late at night, but Gray Urson agreed after Douglas promised to reveal why he sometimes woke up in an unknown place. After that, the two of them went to the Wheels Shark Grand Hotel, where Gray revealed that in the last three days he had had strange flashes of memory about himself frequently going to this hotel for no apparent reason. Hearing this, 
Douglas became quite happy and began to press hard to remember whether he had ever given anyone a letter or note. Luckily, it didn't take long for Grayerson to remember that he once gave a letter to a bartender named Aston, but right before Douglas went to the counter. He found Aston fleeing first, so Douglas chased him to the basement, where unfortunately, Aston had prepared a gun and demanded that Douglas tell him about what really happened to this world, because previously Aston had noticed that Douglas had swapped bodies with Ferguson, and a letter left by Fuller makes him realize that everything around him is actually not real. Aston could know this because he was the one who managed to find the edge of the world, which is still filled with rough metric lines proving that this world is just a computer simulation. This fact of course, this made Douglas confused about why Fuller wrote a letter containing simulation limits to him, because in fact, Douglas himself already knew this. But before Douglas could say anything, Aston threatened to kill him for messing with people's minds and trying to drown Douglas in a pool. <laughs> Luckily, Jason arrived in time to save Douglas' original body, which was seen having a seizure. Of course, this incident made Douglas shaken, and he immediately stated that the 1937 simulation project was a mistake, and Douglas decided to immediately close this project, which of course disappointed Jason. Afterwards, Douglas went to meet Jane at the hotel, but there he found that she had already checked out. Detective Mike, who apparently also came to meet Jane, then approached Douglas and revealed something surprising. In his investigation, it turned out that Fuller had never had a daughter and no woman named Jane Fuller had ever lived in America or Paris. So it's getting quite confusing as to who Jane Fuller really is. After a while, Douglas then bribed a hotel driver to get the final address of the place where he dropped off a woman claiming to be Jane. When he arrived at the place, Douglas was directed to a supermarket, where he met a cashier named Natasha Malinaru, who had a face and body shape very similar to Jane Fuller. Even though Natasha admitted that she had never known Douglas or the company from Hannon Fuller, he felt there was a strange relationship with Douglas, which in the end made him finally realize that Los Angeles in 1997, which had been considered the real world, was actually another computer simulation. This was also proven when Douglas decided to go to a place he would never think to visit, and it was there that he found the end of the world with a rough metric line from a computer simulation, and a letter left by Fuller in the 1937 simulation world turned out to be for Douglas, explaining that the world they have been living in is actually a virtual world. Meanwhile, Detective McBain arrives at the supermarket and confronts him about Fuller's identity, however, Natasha's inability to remember and understand what he said causes McBain to realize that something is wrong with the world, and he decides to conduct further investigation. Some time later, Jane returned to Natasha's body and then contacted Douglas to later make an appointment at Fuller's office. Jean explained that actually there are thousands of simulated worlds, but this 1997 world is the only simulation capable of creating its own simulation, so the 1937 world created by Fuller and Douglas cannot be connected to other simulated worlds, and according to Jane, the real world is currently in 2024. Where he really was Fuller's biological child, Jane further emphasized that it was actually Douglas who had killed Fuller in this world, but that action was not entirely Douglas' fault because Douglas' character at that time was controlled by David, who was Jane's real husband in this world. Real in 2024. At first, David was a very nice guy when they first met, but over time something started to happen to him, and he started using the simulation world as a playground to kill people for his personal pleasure. Meanwhile, on the 13th floor computer's lap, Jason Young was curious about the contents of the virtual world in 1937 and then used a device to transfer his consciousness into Aston's body. But unfortunately, Jason was finally killed because he was hit by a car, and this accidentally made Aston's consciousness from the virtual world of 1937 move into Jason's body, which was in 1997. Finding a new, more futuristic environment, of course, made Aston become fascinated, so that his strange behavior made a security officer immediately report it to Douglas, who was in bed with Jane at the time. Douglas immediately went to the computer lab to talk to Jason, but it didn't take long for Douglas to immediately realize that at this time he was not talking to Jason but with Aston's body. 
He tries to engage in conversation normally, but Aston immediately points a gun and presses Douglas for an answer to his question. Douglas had no choice but to reveal that they were not in the real world, but in a simulated world program using a computer device to convince him, Douglas took Aston to the 13th floor where all virtual worlds and everything in them were created, even though he was confused at first, but slowly Aston started to like this place and was about to lower his gun to get some fresh air, but at the same time David, who came from 2024, Return T he then finds Jane in Daflas' apartment, and Feeling jealous, David tries to kill her, but before he can do anything, the detectives suddenly appear and shoot David dead, and now it seems that the detectives are also starting to realize that they are in a computer simulation. Before parting ways, Detective McBain also asked Jane not to interfere with their characters anymore once she was in the real world. The scene then switches to the real world in 2024, where David's death in the 1997 simulation makes Douglas' consciousness move into David's real body, which is in the real world in 2024. He is quite surprised when he wakes up in a big house, where he finally meets Jane, the original. Jane then takes Douglas out onto the balcony to show him a view of the world of technology in 2024, but the surprise doesn't end there as the 2024 version of Fuller is apparently still alive and looking perfectly healthy. The film then ends with the real world of 2024 shrinking into a line of digital images, which hint that the real world of 2024 is also another simulation. Is it possible that our world is a computer program as well? Don't you remember doing something lately? If so, maybe someone from the real world is using your character. So I thank you for watching. Please like the video if you like it, please dislike it if you don't. Bye for now, and see you in the next storyline.